Hey YouTubers, today we're dealing with a 130 MIG welder that is no longer giving us the feed coming out here. So everything else works. You turn it on and the lights come on, all the power is there. But when you press the trigger, you should get this coming out for your welding and it's not. So this is gonna be really easy to fix. We'll go over how to do this. This is a result of getting the um, welder too close to the work and there's so much heat there, so much energy and so much spatter. Some of it can get in and actually weld um, the exit point for this and then all of a sudden it gets stuck. When it gets stuck, the little motor tries to keep pushing it out every time you press the trigger it's trying to at some point though uh, there's an overheat protection a little fuse pops so today we're going to go over how to easily change the fuse let me just show you kind of what it looks like so we have it plugged in turn it on so you have the fan you have all the lights that should be on working you should be ready to weld but when you press this button you should get that kind of feed So if you don't, you may just need to replace a little fuse. But that's what should happen. So we already replaced the fuse on this one. But uh, first thing I would do is take off this protective piece. Let me just unplug this real quick. I'll cut off this excess. So this thing wasn't moving. You probably wouldn't even have any of the welding material present or it might just be in there tight so you need to get this cover off and you can just turn to your right like righty tighty as if you're tightening it <clears throat> The cover comes off. You might even find there's some, because you got it too close, you might even have some of the spatter <clears throat> on here that you can just clean off with a grinder or some, or some sandpaper. <clears throat> but on this part, you may find that this part has melted a little bit, the tip, or that there's some, some spatter got in there and basically welded this to this. So when you press the trigger, nothing's happening and that will cause eventually that little fuse to pop and then when you turn it on when you press the trigger nothing's going to happen so once you get it unplugged you can fix this pretty easily what i would do first though get some diagonal pliers or some dikes and just cut off if there's any of this material present just cut it off and then take some kind of a abrasive you can use a file use this grinding wheel and just grind down that tip a little bit that's going to get rid of any of the material that's welded together you may it may be so bad you have to grind down maybe even like a 30 second of an inch but probably just a little bit and you'll be able to free it up then you have to go to the problem of it having no power. And to do that, you need to get to the right side of the machine and take off a cover. It'll just take you a few seconds to do it and put in a new fuse in the circuit board. So the circuit board lives about right here. So make sure you've got it unplugged. You can lift up the cover. You're gonna remove these screws so this cover on the right side can come out. So if you're facing it on the right side. A lot of times when you buy the welder, it'll have like a new tip and some new little fuses that come in here. They're really tiny, I'll show you one of them. But they're easy to replace. I'm not sure the rating on them, very tiny. But they're used so if, if it gets too hot and burns up, you can trade it out. This is a tip that I replaced that got, it got too close to the work. 
<clears throat> and it got too hot, it melted, basically welded it shut. And that's what the problem was, is that that little wire could not feed anymore because this was welded shut. So <clears throat> we're just gonna remove these Phillips head screws. Okay, that comes off. Camera here, get you guys in a little closer. So if we look in there, we can see a circuit board. And we just need to get to where the fuse is so we can replace it. If we look in there on the circuit board, way off into the back right hand corner, there is a little clear box. There's a fuse underneath there. I'm not sure why they even put a cover on. But you can just pop that cover off with like a small standard head screwdriver. And that's where that little fuse goes. And then you'll have power back to your feed motor. So I pried that case up just with my knife. Just a tiny bit of force to lift it up. And you can see the fuse right there. Give it a side angle. And you just need to... Pry that up with like a small screwdriver and just pop in the new one and you're good to go. There's a nice image of the fuse. You can see it up close. So it'll be easy to just pop that out, put a new one in. And I don't know if that cover is really that vital or if you need it, you can just push it back down. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put it all back together. So put that cover back on, just push it on. And you're gonna turn it to your kind of opposite how you, how you would think. Turn it to your left. Get that back on tight. It's basically like reverse reverse thread. Keep it, get that back on the protector. When you do your work so that it doesn't happen again, if, you, if you're welding, you can keep your work about maybe that far away, you're gonna, you're gonna be good. When you get in like that though, or if you're in a tight spot, that's when you get the blowback and then that thing can get welded in, into position and that's gonna burn out your motor. Before you even do this procedure, first thing to try though is just let your welder cool down for about half an hour and fire it back up and see if maybe you've got function back. It could be that it's just overheated. There's that little fuse again. And there's a lot of models that are, <clears throat> this is the Vivo Home. These are all made in China. There's a lot of different brands, but they're really the same, the same welder, probably made in the same factory. It's kind of like you have like GMC and uh, Chevy, like GMC, um, Yukon, Chevy Tahoe. You know, it's really the same vehicle, just different, different uh, manufacturer label. And same with these. So uh, if it's a 130 MIG, it probably has that same little fuse in there. First thing to do though is just let it cool down for about half an hour, try it again. If not, then you probably have to correct that issue because it's probably stuck, it's welded. Fix that, grind it down, got that done, put the new fuse in and you're good to go. I'm really happy with this welder. Um, I use it to doing, for like doing Damascus steel for knife making or uh, sword making. And uh, recently used it to put together some parts to convert a log splitter to a forge press and it did great. So a lot of people on the internet are saying that these are underpowered and they can't, they can't do enough. Um, you can't weld big metal, but it really can. Just gotta be patient. So this is a eight ton log splitter and to make the uh, log splitter work, had to take this three quarter inch uh, plate steel, weld it onto this tubular piece for, as an anvil. And then I had to um, do the welds for this collar 
three-quarter uh, three inch steel to this plate. It's all done with that 130 MIG. Put these dies in position. Not, not a very good welder, but it's definitely strong enough for this to work. So this is a seven ton log splitter, three horsepower motor. And, you know, using these rounding dies and flattening dies, you can, you could easily, um, if you get your steel up to say, uh, yellow hot, you're going to, you can easily, uh, do Damascus or whatever. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this helps you to fix your welder and please subscribe when you get a chance.